Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. We'll now continue with Wilbert Perez. He will be speaking about experiences and vulnerability analysis and incidents management by CSERT and UADY. Welcome, Wilbert. Thank you, Sandra. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank LACNIC for the invitation. For me, this is a very special occasion because this is the first time ever that I participate in such an important forum, as is the case of LACNIS, and also for my university this year. This is very important because we are celebrating uh, 100th anniversary. So part of this time, we have dedicated a quarter of a century to information technologies. Over that time, we have matured on cybersecurity issues. So what I'm going to share with you today are the experiences we have had over the past years. Uh, I So, how does the CSERT UADI uh, begin? This was an initiative following a workshop we had in Mexico at the Univers Universidad Veracruzana. This was in March 2019. On that occasion, thanks to LACNIC's team, we were able to receive a message asking whether we were ready to respond to the cyber attacks and particularly to minimize the impact associated to this on our university, particularly what could result from a denial of service attack, identity theft, among others. So when we finished that workshop, we reflected on what we had achieved so far, we realized that we had to evolve. We had to evolve towards a CSERT in order to deal with the new challenges we were facing at the time. So after that, we set up the res incident response team, the security response team. The objective is to respond incidents to our domain, uady.mx, or to the institutional network of the block IPv4 and IPv6 reported by the university community, and also the heads of the higher education departments of the Autonomous University of Yucatan. So we started to consider which would be the best organizational model that would adapt to our requirements. We focused on an internal academic model, which was centralized. This would be the sole point of contact in the entire university for incident response, as well as the vulnerability reports. After that, we conducted a risk analysis in order to submit to our authorities the need of having to evolve to incident response so that we would receive the approval for this project or initiative. So after that, we received the authority so that the CSERT through the general coordination on ICTs of the general secretariat of the university could start operating and working as an internal academic CSERT. So understanding the concept of how we were born, let me tell you about the experiences we have had over the past years, particularly since 2020 as a CSERT. But the reality is that we have been working now for more than 10 to 15 years on IT security. One of the first things that we started to see was where we stood in terms of our services, web services or critical information technology services. In the case of having a breach, this could jeopardize our processes. So we started to apply techniques that we learned 
through training activities. One of those that we consider essential is that of the footprinting techniques, particularly with advanced operators of the search engines in order to detect security breaches. And the surprise was that we did. There were a large number of breaches that we were unaware of so far. The majority of these were due to systems that stopped receiving maintenance, legacy systems that were obsolete or didn't have someone responsible for conducting follow-up. So we recovered all that information. We did follow-up, and in addition to that, we used these techniques so as to respond or prevent future incidents. A week ago before traveling here, we had a security incident with a Zoom platform. Intruders were present in a session in an important celebration in one of the faculties. But unfortunately, this affected the image of our university. Therefore, one of the immediate actions we carried out was to determine how these malicious actors entered. We conducted an uh, investigation and realized that many of the sessions were published sensitive data, as you can see on the screen, such as the ID or password. So my recommendation to universities is that because of our nature as public education aid organizations that we really have to review what we're going to publish in the net sensitive data, such as these tools that we use today in order to provide uh, teaching or share knowledge to our communities. So these should be handled in a better way. And not only that, these tools have also opened the doors to no services that other areas of the university started to implement without the knowledge of the IT area of the university. Very often we noted that these technological services stored typically in the cloud don't follow best practices because of the very nature of being a public service. And once we detected this, we treated these accordingly with the people responsible for these services. We also carried out coordinated actions with cybersecurity organizations. One of the very useful things was registering in cybersecurity lists, such as those of LACNIC, those of uh, CISA, this has allowed us to be aware of the latest vulnerabilities that are reported in the modern infrastructures you have in the internet. So what are the methodologies we followed? We received the alerts of these lists in which we registered. After that, we do a detailed and precise review of the references and the recommendations for mitigation purposes. And if we have time, we also conduct the concept tests recommended by these agencies. After that, we contact the people responsible for the, of the affected services. Now, this is done with the aim of saying telling you what is happening regarding a given service that has a vulnerability, what the impact would be, and the specific recommendations tropicalizing these to the resources and particularly to the different faculties of our university. One of the other things that we have learned is that the services that we provide and that are hosted in the cloud should really be followed up. Particularly, there are several areas at the university that are specialized in different TI areas. So we establish partnerships, for example, with the cloud services 
in order to see how we can activate the tools or the best practices that these technologies, these cloud technologies include, and to have the alerts when we have a DDoS attack or if at a server a given attack is carried out, these can then be alerted and we can carry out coordinated actions. Regarding the experiences we have had in vulnerability analysis, we also follow a methodology which is the following. The first step is to request the authorization to those faculties that have the resources of the or the infrastructures. One of the things that we learned is that not carrying out a given methodology during the analysis of the pen testing will delay knowing what are vulnerabilities we have, specifically to have a poor image for the person responsible for the infrastructure in addition to lacking knowledge on what we're looking for. The aim is to strengthen the, universe, the security of the entire university. Once we receive the approval of the responsible person or from the directors of the university, we proceed to analyze this. We produce reports in order to submit these to the person responsible for the TI area in addition to the directors or the secretaries of the different faculties. The second step, this is one of the activities that consumes more, that is more time consuming. These are documents describing what we carried out from the technical point of view. For example, proofs of the DDoS the vulnerability analysis. This is an example where we conducted an exercise of a critical service for our university. We were able to observe that with a couple of gigas of denial of service, the service crashed in a simulation of a DDoS attack. So this was an eye opener in order to strengthen these services that we detected were vulnerable in the event of such attacks. So we carry out the reports, and at the end of the day, we prepare a summary for issuing recommendations with the specific findings and the specific recommendations that can be carried out. This will depend on the scope. There are some who have access only to the operating system or only to the application, so the relevant person of implementing the operations or the mitigations are those with whom we hold the meetings. Now, in general terms, what are the experiences and benefits that we have found in vulnerability analysis? One is that we have managed to identify our level of security of practically all the domain uadi.mx. This has contributed to mitigate the security breaches, to identify those tools that are efficient and or effective to conduct vulnerability analysis tasks. And on this point, we are making contributions to entire internet community through the GitHub repository with tools and through a repository with the tools that we're testing that are being useful for us. I invite you to visit this website that you have at the bottom of the screen, the URL here at the bottom of the slide. Now, as to incident management, phishing incidents in 2019, we received one or actually several phishing campaigns. More specifically, 2019 was uh, uh, the um, uh, CEO phishing campaigns uh, to our management and uh, key people responsible for certain financial transactions. So we needed, we had uh, to implement anti-spam um, actions, and we also had to organize awareness campaigns. In 2021, we had more phishing, but now more directed to ransomware. In uh, 2021, one of the most uh, outstanding attacks uh, was Trojan, the bank 
Trojan Mikoit. And what was the new thing that we had never done before? Here, we knocked at the doors. Through, through We went to the media, with uh, the social media, with experts. And we requested support to a Twitter user that had made very specific comments about this campaign. And our surprise was very pleasant because we received his feedback. And he gave us support to respond to this incident. And we also shared information that we had received during the attack. So in general terms, for each of the attacks that we receive, we analyze them. We try to identify the objective of the phishing attack. As you can see here, it's, there's a range of reasons. Stealing data of credit cards, installing malicious uh, software, uh, office activation keys, as, as it's an education entity that uh, may have some Microsoft services where it can be um, attacked uh, uh, by people who want to get that kind of information. We also use all the analysis to create a repository of malware samples that are used to analyze the anti-malware solutions and also to learn how attacks are taking place. In some uh, occasions, we have seen that they are not at, um, detected by our anti-malware defenses. And in those cases, the next level is we get directly in touch with our anti-malware vendor to scale up and to get updated signatures. So we document uh, everything, we, all the lessons learned with the tools as a result of each of the security incidents. We see which of those tools can be used for phishing analysis or malware analysis. We don't discard any tools because as we get familiar with them, we create our own knowledge base and we create our own internal tutorials and so that we can train people. Because something that I didn't mention is that at the CSER until recently, there were only two full-time employees. Now we have a third person. There's three of us now. And our, our work is done by interns um, that uh, are constantly rotating. There's a high turnover. One of the challenges is in the very short time we need to give them enough knowledge so that they can su give us uh, support us in the C cert activities. Not, not everything is technical. Raising awareness campaigns have played a key role, maintaining alert the entire university community. We used to, on a weekly basis, we organize campaigns for protection such as uh, information security, identity, phishing, good practices to end users and through these campaigns, we improve the awareness of uh, all our users. We also organize sham attacks. And this is uh, a key thing because it is very helpful. You learn a lot in sham attacks. You have to do them as real as possible. And here we have a small example of a sham attack that we organized a short time ago. A small number of people, we sent a personalized phishing. And to our surprise, 78% of the people did open the email. Some of them clicked on the link. After this, we presented the results and we once again, create uh, um, developed um, uh, awareness campaigns, and after that, once again, we um, uh, check uh, what are the responses. And through phishing, we develop uh, uh, reports for the hosting vendors. Here, you, I have uh, some. I leave you some links as to how to report things to the main providers. And as to the experience in the management of malware incidents, well, uh, we learned of new reliable sites that offer solutions to decipher ransomware files. And we also identify useful tools.
tools to analyze malware. So for data leaks in 2021, we attended our first uh, data leak incident. This was part of, well, we saw that we need to have a certain specialized knowledge on offering uh, uh, tools uh, to uh, respond to incidents like this. And we don't have them. It's very difficult to get information to get to know the root cause of uh, these incidents. So you need the OSINT tools. We learn of how to use tools for um, file analysis. And something that is essential is to collaborate with all the departments, the networks departments, database department, the systems department, since it's a whole set. And we, there's a group of us, and we need to work uh, to respond to incidents like this. So not everything is, well, we not only do we uh, work like this, we collaborate with incidents that uh, reach our domains, and specifically with uh, the uh, tertiary um, education centers to, to see what are the domains that are attacking, uh, attacking us, what are the IP addresses, and this is information that we share with the people in charge of each university, and it is wonderful to have the feedback. And when they tell us that we helped them identify a breach that they were unaware of. So this is everything I wanted to share today. So here I leave you my contact data, just in case you'd like to discuss something that I discussed today, please feel free to contact me at ccerd. Uh, dot, uh, well, here, here you have my uh, address, uh, uh, ccerd at Correo Uadi Max, MX. Thank you. So let's now go to questions, if any. Let's see what's happening online. A comment by Manuel Serrano. Congratulations, excellent presentation, excellent job. Good, yes. The question comes from CSERT Hoodie. Uh, what do you consider to be uh, that was the greatest challenge that you had when after creating the CSERT at the university? Well, I think that our greatest challenge when we created the CSERT was being able to make people understand that is senior management at the university to uh, show them the, how important it was to evolve. We, there was, uh, liked it or not, we have to evolve to uh, be able to respond to cyber threats. This was one of the greatest challenges, and I think that's a challenge that is shared by all the incidents, uh, security incidents response uh, teams. That is, you need to get um, senior management involved, and they need to be aware of how important the C-cert is in the organization. Thank you. Well, 